Hello friends, this video on environmental issues part 8 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now let us discuss some of the important causes in little more detail. So the first thing that we will discuss is sewage. So sewage is the waste water that needs to be removed from a community for healthy living. Now as I said, it, th this waste water comes out of each of our houses on daily basis. But that needs to be removed out of the community. So where do we remove it? So where do we dispose it? Is it a wise decision to, direct, to directly dispose it of in a river which is located far away from our community? Not at all. Because even if we send it to that river, so somehow directly or indirectly that river water only will come back to us for our drinking purposes. So there is no point doing that. So what is the wisest way to handle sewage? So disposal of sewage has to be done in a very appropriate way. Inappropriate sewage disposal can cause water pollution. And what can happen if water pollution is caused? The water, the same water is used for washing our clothes, for cooking, for drinking, for bathing. So for all the purposes, the same water is going to be used. So do we want water to get polluted? Not really. So how should we handle proper sewage disposal? So let us see how sewage is treated before it is disposed of. So sewage needs to be treated in sewage treatment plants before disposal. So these sewage treatment plants play a very important role in controlling water pollution. So let us see what happens here. So the sewage treatment is carried out in two stages, primary treatment and secondary treatment. Now what happens in this treat these treatments? Now basically the focus in sewage treatment is that whatever toxic substances are present in the sewage, they need to be converted into less toxic substances. So that is the main agenda. So let us see how do we do that. So how is sewage treatment done? That might be your question. So let us quickly see. First, we will talk about primary treatment of sewage. So here what we do, physical removal of particles from sewage using the following processes. So here physically whatever extra particles are present in the sewage, so that needs to be removed by filtration or sedimentation. So filtration is that process where we, we actually, when we have a mixture of a solid and a liquid, we pass the mixture through a filter and the liquid passes through but the solid remains over it. So that is how we can separate the solid and the liquid. So, so in the primary treatment of sewage, all the solid particles can be removed from the sewage. So this is the first process that is filtration. So here you can see this is how a filter looks like and it has a, a I mean this netted structure is present which doesn't allow the solid particles to pass through but it allows the liquid to pass through it. Sedimentation is that process where the substances or the solid particles are separated from the solvent or water under the influence of gravity. For example, you can try it out at your home. Let us suppose if you take a, a mug and you put some water and some mud inside it. Now just leave it for some time. What happens? You will see that the mud settles at the bottom and the water remains at the top. So if you want to separate the water from the mud, what you can do, uh, you leave it for some time. Now when you see that the particles have settled at the bottom, so here you can see these are the particles and you have the liquid here, liquid or water or solvent, whatever that is there. So what you can do is you can just pour out the solvent in some other vessel. So at least you got rid of the bigger particles. So these are the two methods by which the particles which are present in the sewage can be physically removed from the sewage. And this is called primary treatment of sewage. So filtration and sedimentation. So as I mentioned, filtration is separation of a solid from liquid by passing it through pores of a filter. So you can think of the sieve which you use by, while you prepare tea. So when you prepare tea, you filter the tea before you uh, drink it, right? So that time you use a sieve like this. So that is also a type of filtration. So in laboratory, you use a filter, something of this sort. So here when you filter it, you actually are left with the uh, solid particles here. So here you have the solid particles and the liquid passes through it. And in sedimentation, what happens? The particles will settle down at the bottom under the influence of gravity. So here you see, first the particle was present everywhere. But when you leave it for some time, after some time T, you see that the particles settle at the bottom and the clear fluid remain at the top. 
So that's how you can separate the two. So this was the primary treatment. Now let's come to the secondary treatment. Now the secondary treatment starts after primary treatment. So now you have already separated the solid particles. So now what you have to do is now out of that liquid sewage, you need to remove the harmful substances. So now it is a more challenging task. So let's see how do we do this. So here the effluent from primary treatment is passed on for secondary treatment. So whatever we receive, what is effluent? Now in sedimentation, the solvent which remained above that is called effluent. So this effluent will now move for secondary treatment and what will happen here? Constant agitation of the effluent. So the effluent is agitated. It is mixed or it is uh, constantly, it is agitated, it is moved and it is mixed. Air is also pumped into the tank. You know, why do we pump air? There is a purpose behind that because now microorganisms are going to play a role in the secondary treatment. Now for microorganisms to live, they need some air so that they can undergo aerobic respiration. So therefore we have pumped in air into the tank. This air will lead, the presence of air will lead to vigorous growth of aerobic microbes and that is what we wanted. Now you might be surprised then why do we want microbes to be present there? That's because microbes will be able to solve our problem. Microbes consume organic matter. So now whatever organic matter is present inside the sewage that will be consumed by the microbes so that the organic matter is not disposed of into the water because the organic matter is something which is biodegradable. So it, if it goes into the water, gets mixed with the water, pollutes the water, there is no point. So we can get the organic organic matter removed before it is disposed. So these microorganisms will start consuming the organic matter. Now what happens? Once the organic matter is consumed, your sewage is actually becoming cleaner with primary treatment followed by secondary treatment. So here comes the concept of BOD that is biochemical oxygen demand. So what is it? Let us quickly see. So biochemical oxygen demand, it is like a parameter which determines the purity of water or which determines the amount of harmful substances that have been removed from water. Now why suddenly are we talking about BOD? So BOD is basically a measure which tells us till when do we need to continue with the secondary treatment of sewage. Now, as you can see that in primary treatment, what do we do? We just remove the solid particles from the sewage. And in the secondary treatment, what we actually do is we allow the microorganisms to grow and we let them consume all the organic matter present in the sewage. But how do we know that how much or to what extent has the sewage been purified or, or, till, or to how, how much extent the toxicity has been reduced. So BOD is a measure to which lets us know when to stop the secondary treatment. So it is the amount of oxygen needed by aerobic organisms in water to break down organic material in water at a particular temperature over a period of time. So what we have done is we have allowed some microorganisms which are aerobic to grow there. So they are, what are they doing? They are constantly utilizing oxygen. So we can measure the amount of oxygen that is being used by them, correct? So now the amount of oxygen gradually will start reducing because the aerobic organisms are continuously using it. And why are they using it? To break down the organic material which is present in the water at a particular temperature over a period of time. So this BOD can give us a, a hint that okay this much amount of oxygen has been used. That means this much amount of it will give us a rough idea that okay this much amount of organic material have already been broken down. So we will get to know how how much of uh, toxic, I mean how much toxicity has been reduced. So lesser the value of BOD, lesser is its polluting potential. So the smaller the value is, the less pollutant it is. That means the less harmful it is. So when the value of BOD reaches a considerably lower value, then we can stop the secondary treatment of sewage and then the sewage is ready for disposal into any water body. 
So secondary treatment is continued till BOD is considerably reduced. Now just see how important the treatment of sewage is because when you treat the sewage now you know that there are no solid particles in the sewage because they have been removed in primary treatment. You also know that there are no organic matter in it because that has been removed during secondary treatment. So now if you may dispose the same sewage directly into a water body it is not going to cause that much of harm. So the difference in the extent of water pollution is huge. So that is why it is extremely important that the sewage should be properly treated before it is disposed of into water bodies. Now the question is what happens once the BOD is significantly reduced? As I said, once it reduces significantly, we stop secondary treatment. Then what do we do? So now the effluent will be passed on to a settling tank. There is another tank called settling tank. And here the bacterial masses sediment at the bottom forming activated sludge. So those microorganisms which were uh, playing a major role up till now, they all will sediment at the bottom and this group, this thing which is formed at the bottom or this sediment is known as activated sludge. So here you can see this is the aeration tank where air was being pumped in and the microorganisms were growing and they were utilizing or breaking down the organic matter. Now once the BOD is reduced significantly it is passed on to the settling tank that is this tank and here the bacteria will settle down at the bottom. So here you can see. So this settlement at the bottom is known as activated sludge. So this is activated sludge. So this sludge is then taken out for further sludge treatment because this again contains a lot of bacteria. So it is taken for further treatment whereas the water which is present or in the topmost layer that water is taken out and this is the treated water or treated sewage. So this can be disposed of into any water body. Now what, what do we do with the activated sludge? As I said, this is passed back into the aeration tank. So as you can see here, we will pass it back to the aeration tank because they contain bacteria and in the aeration tank we need bacteria. And the remaining passed on to anaerobic sludge digesters. Now some of them are passed into anaerobic digesters where the sludge gets digested anaerobically that is in absence of oxygen. So effluent from the settling tank is released into water bodies. So I hope with this it is clear to you that how sewage should be treated and how important is sewage treatment. Now how does sewage discharge harm aquatic life? Now as I had mentioned that sewage is something if you without treating it, if you directly dispose it into a water body, what can it do to the aquatic life? Sewage discharge into water bodies Microbes cause biodegradation of. So what happens is if the sewage is discharged into water bodies. Now this sewage contains a lot of organic matter as I mentioned just now. Now what will happen is the microorganisms they will start degrading the organic matter. They will start breaking down the organic matter and in order to do that they would need oxygen right because these are the aerobic microbes which are able to biodegrade the organic matter. Now when they start using up a lot of oxygen then what happens? All the oxygen which is present in the dissolved form in water they are mostly used up by the microbes. So the microbes actually use up all the oxygen and finally there, there, there is a lack of oxygen for the aquatic life like even fishes need oxygen even the aquatic plants need oxygen but since most of the oxygen is being used up by the microbes so there is lack of oxygen for these aquatic life and this can threaten the aquatic life and it can even kill them so this is how the sewage discharge can harm the aquatic life thank you Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.